Morning everyone. How are we all? Sky Lee, April Hill, Maria H. Hello. I feel like a combination of Bane from Batman and Hannibal Lecter. Who sent me this? It just came in the post. With no litter. Who is it? Who is it, guys? Who is it? Oh dear. Oh dear. Nanny die walking. Nanny die walking. Nanny die heading to the loo. Morning, Nanny die. Uh, morning, everyone. How are we all? Um, I hope you're all well. Uh, why don't we just to annoy the so far six people have hit the thumbs down? Let's just hit lots of thumbs up icons, guys. Go for it. Come on. Let's just do it. Um, it really tickles us. It really tickles us. The more they hit the thumbs down, the more we love it. It's so funny. Um, Stuart G, good morning. Ellery Jones. Karen Ula, Louise1174, Sky Elise. How are you this morning, Sky Elise? How are you? How, seriously, how are you? Um, is Emma here? If Emma is here, we had a lovely chat with our book competition winner last night. So we've chatted to Sophie recently and lovely Emma, who sent us the other lovely um, masks, obviously. I have one in my back pocket just here, the squad goals. Um, I'm going to double mask, guys. I'm going to double mask. Oh, God. Double mask. It looks like a jock strap on the face, though, doesn't it, when you start to double mask? Look at my ears. I've got cauliflower ears. Oh, cauliflower ears. Um, Leanne H. User 1. How are you? Oh, all right. How are you? Emma Atkins, morning. Tutti fruit. How's that lovely baby? Oh, look, there's Toffee. You all right, Toffee? Do you need to go out? Usually when she sits like that, it's quite urgent. On. No, 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 it's not. She was, she was just, she's just playing. Um, Sarah Dalby, Della, Di Della Nixon. Uh, Love Connection. Hello, I'm new and loving the channel. Welcome, Love Connection, Rachel. Is Nanny Di joining us this morning? I don't know. She just kind of, she trotted from in there to the toilet. She didn't look very happy. Who knows? She might. She might. Let me just... I'm going to refresh my page because it's really distracting because I'm currently looking at myself 10 minutes ago. Um, Bethan Williams, Alan Morley, Bev Hartnell. Nadia is obviously at loose this morning um, and we're slightly earlier whenever Nadia's not here because, <laughs> believe it or not, it's a great opportunity to get lots of work done uninterrupted so I can get cracking earlier. Um, hey all, hey Erin Bullimore, happy Bernie. Um, how are we all? I hope you're all well. I hope everyone's well. Um, it's been a funny old, funny old week, really. Uh, it's been a week of, I don't know, I sort of feel, does anyone feel safer? I haven't asked that question. Does anyone feel sort of on balance safer at the moment? Or does everyone feel as vulnerable as they did? Someone mentioned looking at our coffee moaning about a year, almost a year ago now, and how we have almost a sort of historical document Although it's not a document. Uh, no, Vegan Family, no, Jackie Roswell, Bev Hartnell, yes. Happy Bernie, yes. You do feel, you do feel safer. I feel trapped this week, random nothingness. Morning, Ashley Gardner, Vivian Tinsley. How are you, Ma? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Nanny Di. Good morning, everybody. I don't know if she's gonna come. She's her own boss, she's her own boss. Go and have a look at Nanny Di on Instagram, on my Instagram last night. She um, She's looking a bit peaky, I think. I think she's looking a bit peaky. If you're on the handsets at the moment, have a look on Instagram and you'll see what I mean. She looked a bit a bit pale around the gills, I thought. Um, uh, Leila Baziad, yes, no, in the middle, some days are better than others. Uh, feeling anxious today, Ishbel Alati. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, I have a dread that the schools will cause a resurge. Hmm. I know what you mean. Um, I was just reading about briefly uh, the California strain. Apparently there's a West Coast strain, isn't there, that's uh, more transmissible. New variant of the coronavirus identified in California will be monitored closely, health officials say, after early research suggested it may be, may be more contagious than strains seen during the early months of pandemic. Now, the thing about that is, is that it could be a strain 
that has developed along the same lines as say the Kent strain. So it doesn't necessarily mean it's like a new one on top of the Kent strain. It could be just another, you know, one like the Kent strain that's a bit more transmissible, uh, not necessarily any more fatal uh, and that hopefully vaccines can work against. Because, you know, we're getting, you know, the news flow is by and large relatively positive, isn't it? We've got the Johnson & Johnson single jab uh, vaccine coming. Um, you've just been on a gondola ride, Ashley. <clears throat> you're not in you're not in Florence uh, you're not in Venice are you on a gondola ride where are you how did you do that uh, morning Ams X morning hope you're well too um, Katie Wilson I don't want my kids to go back it's too soon I don't want Annie Di to go back to school I'm worried about her I'm worried that well a she's incredibly disruptive in class she always sits at the back and she asks really irritating questions. Um, but also, it's really frustrating because when she puts her hand up, she's so short, she can't even see her hand. Yes, you just see the tip of a finger just emerge yes, from, yes. from behind the table. Um, oh, Faith Goodman, on ITV this morning from Venice. Ah, I see, I see. Uh, yeah, Mum, what is happening in Venice? Drag Nanny Die in, Mark. Would be lovely to say hello and see her. No, Sky not, Elise. Not You're not dressed. Oh, she's not dressed. I'm not even dressed at all. I'm just I thought look. you looked quite smart. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, can I have a coffee? Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. Where are they? I can't see them. Yes, oh, there. Hello. Say hello. Oh, you look better tonight, Mum. You've got your horns have gone down. Shut up. You looked a bit peaky there last I night. Am. There you are. That's I you. Looked a bit peaky. Yeah. Well, yeah. On my Instagram, I posted a photo of you. I, I just, I didn't know whether you were feeling too good or, or what. I was feeling dreadful. I just didn't tell you. That's the sort of person I am. Oh really? Yeah. You <laughs> didn't. You didn't look well in the photo. Oh, thank do you, you. I mean, by and large, do you feel... Let's just do this so that we can get you in shot. Oh. By and large, are you feeling... I was just asking the subs. Do you feel safer or less safer in recent weeks? Oh, God. What's what is he talking about, subs? Well, do, is Isn't it, he an is idiot? It, why is that an Isn't idiot? Isn't he lovely, though? Oh, do lovely. you feel safer, given, given, given the progress that we've made? Do you feel safer? Do you feel, well, you've been vaccinated, you've had half your oh, vaccine. That. Oh, Do you well, feel safer think... in terms of the virus oh, and you, where we're at in terms of society? I didn't really feel unsafe before. No, you didn't really believe it was happening, did you? No, so in that respect, yeah. I was in a different place. But, yeah, no, it all looks good, doesn't yeah. it? Do you sort of stay across the news or do you just let it float over you, trusting that we'll tell you anything significant yes. and it's only about what really directly affects you? I do, Mark, I do. Oh, all right, OK. I just thought I'd check in there. Yeah. OK. Well, all our subs have missed you. Nan, Nan will be appearing in the vlog. Um, yeah. are, are you preparing for some green fingered hell today? Yes. There and I've go. got class as well. And, um, She's got class as well. And, and everything. We're going to scrub up then. I'm going to go and scrub up. Yep. All right, Ma. Speak to you later. And Ma. Yeah. Don't forget. No, don't you either. Don't forget. Just don't forget. Um, so, uh, Debbie Sanderson got my COVID jab this morning and feeling very nervous. <clears throat> Wish me luck, everyone. It'll, you'll be absolutely fine. You'll be absolutely fine. Hit the thumbs up, guys, just to piss all the haters off um, and really, really, really tickle me. Um, <clears throat> so, Ryan McLaughlin, I saw that it was your happy birthday. It's your birthday on the third. Uh, you're 13, in fact. So, happy birthday, Ryan McLaughlin. Um, and if Emma has joined us, who we were talking to last night, welcome, Emma. Um, we were talking about you as well, Ashley. And yeah, lovely, really lovely. Um, Lior Vibe, Lior Vibe Feeler, Nanny Di, did you get my painting? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Did you send it directly to her or did you send it to our... Oh, sorry, the one that... No, I haven't been to her flat yet and she only came last night. I haven't given her the photograph yet, no. The print, sorry. We're going to film it for the vlog. <coughs> Um, Gabrielle, Dr. John Campbell's video on vaccine effectiveness is really good news. I feel hopeful today for the first time in ages. I didn't watch it. I'm sure Nadia did late last night. I'm sure she was sat in bed listening to, listening to him. Um, just, just, you know, just chatting away in her ears, whispering sweet nothings. It's just, just so distressing, isn't it? Um, a lot of the side effects of the vaccine only last 24 hours. So, yeah, so some of the news today. Yes, yeah, so I was talking about the California strain. So again, yeah. Always a worry, always a concern. And I think someone that came off the back of someone saying they're worried about the schools going back. And we talked about that yesterday, didn't we, a bit? Um, we talked about the fact that, yeah, you know, it does seem strange that most sections of society... Try saying that, put your teeth properly in. Most sections of society, if they're being released gradually, it does make you wonder um, about the sanity of 
releasing the schools all in one go. Do you know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, it's, uh, I, I think I share the thought. I think, you know, I mean, you know, obviously Kiki's going back to school this September, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's a cause for concern, I think. I, I don't know why they don't just start younger and get older. Sam JP, I feel less safe, worry people will start being less cautious because they think we are almost out of all of this. Yeah, I mean, I think I'll feel infinitely safer once, you know, a, a larger swathe of the population has been uh, vaccinated um, beneath the age of uh, sort of 60, 50, around there. I mean, so many people haven't been vaccinated that kids are going to go home to. So we are, for sure, more than likely going to see the, um, the numbers pop up, the R rate pop up. And then, uh, and then uh, to be honest with you, the part of it all that I find really tedious is the way in which, for example, the news presents it as news, that the rates have gone down when we're in lockdown. I mean, that's blindingly obvious, isn't it? Um, but, uh, you know, and then when they go up, when we come out of lockdown, they'll be presenting that as if it's news. It's not news. This is just, this is what is, this is what happens. Do you know what I mean? I get a bit fed up with that. It's kind of like, it's, let's state the obvious. That's not journalism, is it? Stating the obvious. Tally123, how do you feel about Reading and Leeds Festival going ahead? That's interesting, you should ask that. I think it provides a fillip of hope for young youngsters. Uh, I mentioned it to Maddie, and she literally squealed with excitement. And in many regards, it's a bit like parenting. I think... Whether they actually happen or not, um, I think it provides much needed hope and a much needed belief for young adults that the narrative is definitely changing. And I think that, I think we can't underestimate how important that is for, for youngsters. Uh, yeah, very good point, Reese. More strains than Pokemon. Um, do you see what I mean? So I think, I think it's a really important sort of morale booster. Now, the logistics of it, I think, is another question because... Um, I've got a sense, because Glastonbury isn't happening, and I've got, I mean, I went to Reading once when I was younger. I, I wasn't a I, I preferred all the dance festivals. Um, but I do wonder whether these festivals are, the financial incentive is there to sell tickets regardless and just work on the assumption that it's going to happen, and then maybe they've got an insurance policy, which means they can postpone people over. It's like there's a dance or a drum and bass festival that Maddie and all her friends wanted to go to, and they were going to go last year, and it didn't happen, and so they bumped their tickets over to the following year and then made it an extra day longer so that new people could go. So I'm not entirely certain it'll happen. I'm not entirely certain it'll happen. But I think it's an important message to youngsters that change is on the horizon. Do you see what I mean? Uh, Amnesty strips Navalny of prisoner of conscience status. That doesn't sound like a good thing, Lucy, does it? Good morning, Outlandish Creations. I am about to sip from your furry mugget. <laughs> Not literally, obviously. Um, when does eating outside happening? Is it May or June? Um, I think eating outside is from May, isn't it? May 17th or April? Was it April? Oh, God, I don't know. The bloody dates, they all shift around, don't they? Uh, thank you, Carol. These glasses suit me. Blue. <laughs> Shall I do a bit of that again? Um, so, so yeah. So, thank you for asking the question. I think that um, I think that the festivals, uh, Reese Roberts. I don't recommend people booking flights because at this stage the airlines will just keep your money. I do think I do. I think booking holidays abroad is a much riskier enterprise. I do think sort of any UK-based activity. At the very least, when you come out of lockdown, if they're playing silly bugs, you can go around their gaff and you can ask for your money back. But with the airlines, it's kind of, I don't know, there's something a bit... Mm, a bit mm. um, so I'm not entirely certain that the festivals will go ahead. But I think it's really, I think it's really, I think it's really exciting for the kids to think that they might. There we go. Um... Woody, we we have the boxing in Gibraltar at the end of March, and they're going to be discussing getting fans in a bit early, I think. Although I'd love to go. That's interesting, yeah. Um, Ellen, this is the rescue you must check out. Awesome, Glynith guinea pig rescue. Oh, guinea pigs. We used to have guinea pigs. Um, Laura, Laura, don't understand people that listen to Boris. Even Nicola Sturgeon said there is no way any of us can predict exactly dates things will happen. It's conversation. Yeah, I mean, mm, I do think you know, damned if he does, damned if he doesn't, Boris. He had to give some kind of a roadmap. If he hadn't given a roadmap, there'd have been so many people going, where's the roadmap? Then he gives a roadmap and people say, but what about the data? I mean, 
it is whack-a-mole, isn't it? I mean, when you're in government, I mean, that kind of, there's, there's, a, there's a pro and a con to absolutely everything. Absolutely everything. Green Figured Hell is being shot. Here we are in the middle of shooting stuff. Um, Natasha Milchin, my ex used to live in Reading and that festival was his life. He was no youngster either, 20 plus years older than me. Yeah, I enjoyed Reading when I went, but who was, who was performing when I went? I think it might have been Primal Scream, Ride. Was it Nirvana? I can't remember. It was a, it was a big deal, but I don't know. You do get to a point where festivals is just like a right old fag, isn't it? Um, Zoe Aggie, I'm happy you did a roadmap and it's given everyone so much hope. I agree. I mean, I think it gives you the loosest of structures to work towards, doesn't it? And we all need some structure. And I think that's part of my thinking um, around festivals, to be honest with you. So uh, the Pfizer jab looks to be even more effective than they thought it was going to be. That's got to be good, isn't it? That's got to be good news, guys, hasn't it? Um... And the government is, uh, yeah, English survey finds high antibody levels from Pfizer vaccine uh, rollout. Uh, people in England who've received two doses are getting are generating strong antibody responses, which is really good. Uh, I mean, in all of this good news, it's really important for me to know how effective it is against new strains. Because that's, that's basically the game changer, isn't it? That's, you know, okay, so we've got to, essentially, we've got a cure or we've got a preventor for this current COVID. But... You know, what about everything else? And the thing that Nadia's been going on for, for low, low, you know, since time immemorial is that antibody levels are only part of the immunity picture. The vaccines also generate a strong T-cell protection. Uh, nearly 95% of under 30s tested positive for antibodies 21 days after one dose, which is really good, which suggests that once the rollout has reached the much younger population, um, you know, we're going to be in a much safer place. You're right, so that's Pfizer. What does it mean for Oxford? Oxford's been battered about, hasn't it, really? There's been, whoever's done the PR for the Oxford AstraZeneca should be shot because it's just been an absolute mess, hasn't it, really? Every time you think there's something good about it, they need to, be able, they need to have someone who can strong, other than the government, that can strongly refute, you know, like Europe's refusal to get it and all that kind of stuff because it ends up being the poor relation and we don't necessarily know that. Nadia's at Loose Women. Um, why not in 5%, Wonder Woman? I wonder, I know, I know what you mean. Um, and the other big news today is that Gavin Williamson is trying to avail himself of, you know, trying, he's trying to get a, a, an A star, I think. So he's suggested that, um, that students should avoid mini exams and that schools themselves should mark their A-levels and GCSEs. <sighs> you know what? I mean, I think poor old kids have been pushed all over the place. I mean, we have a generation who had their predicted grades that dictated their grades. I mean, you know what we think about the whole grading system. We think that, I personally think, if you have to have a system of grading, which let's accept that you do for the vast majority, um, I don't see why it can't be on a more coursework level. I, I just don't understand why it can't. I remember when I was doing my O-levels, almost half of my English O-level was coursework, and then it sort of rolled back. It gives you time to think more, it, it removes the stress, then learning doesn't just become about remembering stuff. And I do worry as a nation and, and as humans, let's not forget we're humans, we're not, just, we're not just commercial products just to go out and just earn money for the whole bigger system. You know, is learning just about remembering stuff in order to pass it or is learning about learning stuff to expand yourself? You know what I mean? Coursework, I loved coursework. It meant that you could just, I just did better work in coursework. I mean, of course, I did well, but I mean, I did well in the exams, but I know for a fact that my work in coursework was going to be so much stronger than the work I did under test conditions. And when else in your life are you asked to write an essay in test conditions? You just aren't, you know, it's just, it's, an, it's a totally fraudulent notional system. Yes, we need a system, but let's re-examine it. I really, really am, you know, I, really, I, get, I feel stronger and stronger about that the older I get. I really do. Stronger and stronger about it. Um, they should never have scrapped coursework. Now, you know, if, if the main, obviously, of course, is the impact, the potential kickback on that is that there's more work for teachers, but that needs to be examined. You don't do it because you don't want to give more work to teachers, either employ more teachers, give more money to teachers, give more money to schools, whatever. You don't, you know, this system is just a system that works. It's, it, we've just inherited this defunct system, it really, and, and for kids, 
You know, so when you hear the, when kids see these headlines, GCSEs, A-levels going to be, this generation, especially the corona generation, they just kind of look at the sky and just go, yeah, whatever. You know, the, the meaning of them has been almost completely zapped by the insanity of what they've done. So there we go. Um, some other bits of, of frippery news. Frasier, was anyone a fan? Okay, let's talk about nostalgia. Favourite sitcoms. What were your favourite sitcoms, guys? Because Frasier has been recommissioned or is coming back with Kelsey Grammer. Can you believe that? Hit TV show uh, to be revived after 20 years. Of course, sadly, the, um, the father, John, Maho uh, John Mahoney, who played Marty Crane, he, he died in 2018. But, um, but yeah, Frasier's coming back. And the, I have a huge soft spot for Frasier because it was my Nanny Thelma's favourite favorite show. Oh, here we go. Here you, here you come. You like a bit of nostalgia, don't you? Let's get you up on the big screen. Friends. It was a mainstay, really, Friends, of my university years, though. I wasn't as big a fan of it. Uh, the Young One, Sarah Clemmy. I loved that when I was at school. Red Dwarf, Kerry J. Williams. I liked the first... I, I liked Red Dwarf at first. Uh, it all got a bit dubious, didn't it, when... Um, uh, Craig, whatever his name, it all went a bit weird, didn't it? One point, Desmond's, Stuart G. I used to love Desmond's. That was so good. Layla Baziad, everybody loves Raymond. It's one of Nadia's favourites. Claire Smiley, Golden Girls, another great one. Katie Fenton, Roseanne. That was that was appointment to view, wasn't it? Back in the what was it, eighties? Remember that would come on. Is anyone? I mean, is anyone old enough to remember Soap with Billy Crystal? I mean, I was really young, but I remember thinking it was really funny. Gavin and Stacey, Different Strokes. Do you remember that? Different Strokes. Bare Voice, Jenny Ella Cook, Keeping Up Appearances. That was one of my nan's favourites. She was just like, my nan was just like Hyacinth Bucket Bucket. Malcolm in the Middle. That was a good Wonder Woman. 2.1 Kids. Oh, do you remember that? Only Fools and Horses. Hello, hello. Um, Kelsey Grammer was awful to his wife in Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I heard this fact. Uh, Desmond's Will and Grace, Happy Days, Elaine Stubbs, Black Adder. That's very good, Black Adder. I used to love that. That just got better and better and better, didn't it, with each series? And you were kind of always waiting for which historical series. Lucy, get, who can forget Porridge? I mean, Porridge was an absolute classic, an absolute classic in our household. I mean, I think Porridge was watched all the time, and it was so ahead of its time, wasn't it? The acting in it was just. It was just so nuanced, wasn't it? And they were just great. It's, I always say it's that thing of there's a difference, but you can get great comedians, and then you can get great comic actors. And um, you know, for me, the, the you know the cast and the the script of Porridge was just quite something else, really. Um, it was just amazing. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, Butterflies with Wendy Craig. Ah, oh, The Good Life, Mandy Wilson, Emma Carter, Bread. Uh, Cagney and Lacey wasn't a comedy, though, was it? I, I liked Cagney and Lacey. I used to, does anyone else remember Hill Street Blues, if you're looking at Cops and Robbers? Bread, Emma Carter was brilliant. Are you being served, Ellen Nixon? That used to make me chuckle a lot. Good Life, yes, Minister. It Ain't Half Hot Mum. Yeah, do you remember that? And do you remember at the end of the, at the, end of the sitcoms, they had, they'd have a, a strap that went across... Ever decreasing circles, I used to love that. Richard Bryars would come in and he'd always turn the phone around because it was put, put back down wrongly. That was my granddad, that was. Uh, the Liver Birds. Oh my God, this is so taking me back. Um, oh yeah. And what was the one? Do you remember the one with uh, Sorry? Do you remember Sorry? Swearing language, Timothy. Oh. You see, for me, sitcoms completely takes me back to sitting in the lounge with my nan and granddad. And I'd always be, I would always wonder whether my dad, who granddad, who had a very stony, stern face, whether he would ever crack a smile. He did with porridge. Liver birds was good. Taxi. Do you remember that with Christopher Lloyd and Danny DeVito? That was good. Timothy. That's right, Timothy. One foot in the grave. I liked one foot in the grave. It got on my nerves after a while. Last of the, su Last of the summer wine. You've just, Sarah Clemmie, you've just reminded me. That was my grandfather's favourite. Do you remember the episode of Last of the Summer Wine where they, they went round a corner and all sat on a sofa on the back of a truck and it just slides out of shot? It was like Last of the Summer Wine's equivalent to Only Fools and Horses when he goes over. I mean, they were just, they were just such appointment to view, weren't they? Elaine Stubbs, George and Mildred, Robin's Nest, Gene Tootle. I used to love Robin's Nest. What was the one, Just Good Friends? Do you remember Just Good Friends? With Penny and what's his face? 
uh, what was his face? Moonlighting with Bruce Willis and Sybil Shepherd. <gasps> oh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I like that. I was a bit old for that. On the buses, Paul Nicholas. That's right, Sue Smith. Thank you. Uh, moonlighting, the live of the birds on the buses. Rising, damp. Oh, it was so good. Wasn't it? It was so good. Alf Garnet. Oh, God, do you remember that? What was the one with um, Steptoe and Son? I never quite got that. I was always mesmerised as a, as a child when I was watching it with just the awfulness of the older guy's face. And wasn't it like in real life he was younger than the, than the guy who was playing his son? Um, me and my girl. Men behaving badly. Oh, my God. Me and my flatmate, we used to... I mean, that was just... That was us. It was so good, wasn't it? It was so good. I mean, it was so stupid. But it was so good. It was such a father, Ted. That was good. Of course, that gave us Graham Norton, didn't it? That's where he came from. Uh, I remember working with, this is really odd. I remember, you know, in early, early years and we were doing a test for a pilot show or something, other, filming something at the Riverside Studios. And I, w I was reminded not that long ago that two of the wannabe presenters, they, they hadn't established themselves. The two wannabe presenters we were in a meeting in the cafe were Graham Norton and Matt Lucas. And we were testing them both out. Isn't that funny? Funny when you look back and you think, we're all just ordinary people, really. Um, bottom. Yeah, never really got on with that. What was the other one he, he played where he played the Ab Fab? Hey, how can you forget Ab Fab? One of the greatest. The greatest. Um, and they were all just brilliant in that, weren't they? All brilliant. Uh, Duty Free. Is that, is that, was that a show? What was the one? The Young Ones, that was good. With Vic Black Books. I mean, Alan Bastard, that was it. Alan Bastard. Oh, my God. Black Books, The Good Life. What was the one with Honor Blackman, The Guy Was a House? Oh, yes, yes, Katie Fender. And what was the one with um, Judy Dench and Jeffrey Robinson, was it? Where they were, and there was that really nice song at the beginning. Oh, and they were, like, romantic, and they were together. Love Thy Neighbour, da, 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 The Avengers. Yes, Prime Minister. What was it? Jeffrey, sorry, Jeffrey Palmer, that's it. May, May to December, was it? Waiting for God? What was the one? Do you remember H-A-P-P-Y? I'm H-A-P-P-Y. I'm H -A Likely Lads. My mum used to love the Likely Lads. The British Empire. That was good. A fine romance. A fine romance with no kisses. A fine romance with no missus. Father Ted. Only when I laugh, that's it. I am H-A-P. And they were all three of them were in beds in a hospital, weren't they? Oh, my God. The days. The days. Oh. And what's the, what's the one the, the, uh, more recent? Is it This Is England? Not This Is England? This England? That one with... The, the, that's just brilliant. Sort of pretend documentary. As time goes by. As time goes by. Oh, yeah. And which was the one? Was that the one with Judy Dench and her actual husband in it? As time goes by. Bless this house. The fall and rise of Reginald Perrin, Kate Kim. My God. There were sort of those, there were those comedies that were sort of the slightly Premier League comedies, weren't they? Slightly more sophisticated. I mean, I remember as a kid when MASH was on our telly over from America and I couldn't get it because there was no canned laughter. Do you remember that? How we were sort of addicted and slavishly attached to the idea of canned laughter. Um, Cold Feet, that was good. Yeah, it's more sort of drama comedy, wasn't it? Yeah, where has is, where is all the time gone, someone just said. I don't know whether that's the name of one or... Good Night Sweetheart, yeah. Two pints of lager and a packet of crisps. I didn't get into that, I didn't watch that. Wasn't there a spin... Oh, hang on, what's the other one? Not George and Mildred, Terry and June. What about Terry and June? We lived for Terry and June. That weird sort of wonderland in the 70s where... Fictional characters were also the names of the people playing them. Do you know what I mean? So June Whitfield and Terry... Oh, what was his name? Terry... June, did I just say Terry and June? Yeah, Terry... What was his name? Terry what? What was Terry's surname? Two and a Half Men. Robin's Nest. Oh, I love... Terry Scott. That's right. Terry Scott. God! Happy Family, was there one with Happy Family? Where they, I think that was the first one where Martin Clunes played the adolescent son. I'm pretty certain. Was it, was it 
No place like home. That's right, I think someone said that, no place like home. Oh, I love all that. Anyway, look, I've got a couple of stories I really want to show you. This one's really funny. Have you heard about Barak the sheep? Check this out, guys. Check this out for a, a sheep that... Uh, how do I close? Oh, stop seeing this ad. It's so... It's in, uh, go away. All right. It look, check this. Ah, oh, go away. Can't get the ads to close. Anyway, I'm going to show you this sheep because it's phenomenal. It's called Barak. Barak. <laughs> Do you get it? Barak. Right, you ready? Right, hang on. Let me... Uh, oh. Still there. Okay. Barak. You ready? Check him out. Oh, look at that. Look at him. He's gone in for a haircut. Look at that. Barak. Now, I seem to remember... Um, oh, can't turn you around. I'm trying to turn... Hang on. Oh. There we go. I seem to remember there was a story of a sheep that, that avoided his, his farmer and hid out in the caves or in a cave in um, Iceland. And it came out. It just had like hair like that. So uh, this animal was found in a forest in Australia with a fleece that was so overgrown he could barely see. The sheep's been nicknamed Barak and was founded by, found by a member of the public who contacted the farm sanctuary near Victoria in Melbourne. He was once an owned sheep, but now... Oh, do you want to see him underneath the... Look, once he's had his hair cut off. Check this out, guys. This is so sweet. Look. Oh, naked in his birthday suit. Look. He's gone from that in there to that. Look at that. With his long hair, he looks like some of the people I've inadvertently danced with at festivals. Do you know what I mean? all that sort of dread stuff kind of going on. Um, so that was one thing that I thought was very sweet and a nice end to that story because, of course, he's now free of his, free of his wool. Uh, Frasier, hit TV show coming back. Will the cast all come back? Talking of all of that, I think, I think that would be very exciting. Um, and then with those, I thought this was quite a charming story. Mother and son become tap dance lockdown sensation. Um, and let me show you a little photo. In fact, is there a little I'll show you a little film. Do you want to see a tap dancing duo? Mum and son. Everyone doing something different in lockdown. Check this out. Look, and uh, there they go. Now, I wanted to ask you all: What do you make of tap dancing? I'm going to say something really radical now. Tap dancing makes my right armpit really perspire with embarrassment. So when the pandemic, pandemic hit, dance teacher Lizzie G found, out, found herself out of work. In order to stay positive, the mum of two decided to use her newfound spare time to teach her son Rufus to tap dance. Now they've both become a dancing sensation and they attract millions of hits online. Go and check them out. I, I'm not a fan of tap dancing. I mean, hit, hit Lionel Blair. Okay, let's unpack why I don't like tap dancing. It's incredibly skillful. It's incredibly difficult. It's incredibly complicated. It makes an irritating noise, although I do like it when it's in rhythm. It's the faces people pull when they're doing it that does it for me. Does anyone else? <laughs> I, I, I find the faces and then it makes my arm, I literally start to flood. I flood. You know that, is it Broadcast News, whatever that film was, where someone was a news anchor and he started to sweat, so that's me. He started to, f I flood. So if I, t you know, so as a family, you know, Adina loves tap dancing, Nadia's sister, and whenever we've gone to shows or variety shows or performance shows at the very, many various courses, schools and things that, you know, Maddie's been to, Dina's kids have been to, Dina teaches, you know, we've been to so many, you know, it's a performing family, you know the deal. You go to so many, it makes your teeth clench, Gabriel. And, you know, I love dance, ballet, contemporary dance, break dance, hip hop. Give me all that. Tap dancing happens and I literally sink in my seat and my armpits start to flood. And Nadia looks at me and she knows. She goes, oh, Mark. It's... And it's the jazz hands. It's the jazz. So I'm so delighted for them. And as I say, it's such a skill. It's such a skill, and I doff my cap. 
But my God, do they have to pull those silly faces? It's one of my problems with Strictly Come Dancing or Strictly Dancing. That... <laughs> oh, I'm literally, I'm making myself perspire. Um, no jazz hands in Irish dancing, Wonder Woman. I do prefer that. There's a sort of rigid, rigid beauty to Irish, the line dancing thing that I do quite like. That's, that's kind of like, it's kind of like hardcore, isn't it? It's like tap dancing for mentalist ravers. I love it. And that's skill, I mean, you know, and they don't have their jazz hands. It's none of this. <laughs> none of that. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Final thought for the day, um, especially when you see someone literally counting their dance steps on Strictly as they do their routine. Oh, I don't, I know, not a fan, but love ballet dance. I mean, I can say, you know, I love ballet. I love, I love all sorts of dance. I'm a big dance fan, but tap dancing just makes me squirm. Um, hi, Lisa and Ian from Perth, Western Australia. Sending you regards. Uh, so uh, this, was a, this struck me as a really tragic story, and it also struck me as a possible subject for a Confessions of a Modern Parent, final story of the day. This is awful. Has anyone heard, so does anyone know anyone who's a gamer? You know, gaming, does gaming. Um, does anyone know anyone who does, you know, is, game, is, is a keen gamer? You know, because it's, it's become, in lockdown, for a number of young, young, especially boys, mainly boys, but they're also girls too, obviously. Um, gaming has become a real cross-addictive. It's a real immersive thing. And I know for a fact that if I was younger now, and although I, you know, sometimes partake in the games of the kids, I have to be very careful because I could easily throw my evenings or you could just throw away a lot of time playing them and they're incredibly clever they're incredibly sophisticated and all that kind of stuff I love them but this story just struck me as really tragic so a star professional female gamer uh, was stabbed to death by a rival gamer in Brazil um, the two had been playing on competing teams on Call of Duty she went round to his house to take part in a joint competition and this guy just stabbed her. And when the police came, he'd filmed it, uploaded it, and said he knew he'd done something wrong, but he didn't care. And we were thinking, it's, it's weird that this, the reason, this story just popped up literally on my thing as I was kind of just about to go live. And, um, and I thought, God, you know, wow. The dangerous, dangerous, sharp end of gaming can lead to a complete loss, I think, of what reality is. And I was saying to Nadia, Nadia obviously has no experience or understanding of gaming, but I thought it might be quite an interesting Confessions of a Modern Parent to talk about gaming. Um, and, yeah. You know, so, yeah, it's... it's, it's that's, I don't know why, it was just like the... It was the chilling end of, of what looks like, you know, me and the girls will play, you know, they'll call me go, Dad, we can't get through this Lego section of Harry Potter Lego on the PS4. And I'm like, OK, I'll come in and I'll try and do it. But you know, it can, it can lead to real, really dark stuff. So guys, thanks for being so lovely. Thanks for listening and sharing in that lovely nostalgic trip down, down memory lane with the, the television of the 70s and 80s and 90s and 2000s. Um, hit the thumbs up if you haven't um, and you'd like to. Um, subscribe if you haven't. Um, someone was asking there, any GFH or Gabriel or reviews on the way? Well, it's a very good question. Me and Nads are going to be doing a review of It's a Sin over the weekend. Um, Green Fingered Hell is, has been started to be shot, but we haven't really shot enough to, to, to constitute one, but it is coming. Uh, more vlogs will be coming. Um, and um, uh, what was the other question? Any other reviews? Uh, well, yes, me and Nan are doing a review of the new Tom Hanks film, but there isn't an awful lot out. Uh, we are going to do the Malcolm and Marie film too, but I've tried, literally I haven't been able to find two hours, which is quite long to um, sit down and watch it. So, so reviews are going to start coming. Cinemas are going to be opening. Films are going to be re released. We are going to be upping the Popcorn Junkies movie side of the channel again. So do keep your eyes peeled there. That is the Netflix film, yeah, Malcolm and Marie. Um, thanks, guys. It's always lovely having an actor with you. Um, and Kids TV next. Mandy Wilson, Kids TV for tomorrow. Get your nostalgic thinking caps on, guys, and let's think about Kids TV for tomorrow morning. All right, guys, have a lovely day. Bye.